So yesterday, um, I'm walking around my apartment complex listening to a podcast um, where this girl is breaking down how to read scripture, how to um, do Bible studies. And so, you know, I'm trying to learn from her different techniques or strategies. And in it, she was breaking down a scripture and she was talking about, um, you know, they had mentioned God in the scripture. And she was like, she asked herself, you know, okay, God, what is God, whatever. And immediately I paused the video and I just started breaking it down for myself. Um, I'm like, God is the I am. You know, he is, he's the I am. Uh, that was the first thing that came to mind. And so everything just started, a lot of stuff just started flowing out of me. <laughs> so thinking about, okay, if God is the I am, right? And being children of God, you know, being in that relationship or connection, what do we follow I am with? So knowing the importance of okay what am i saying you know you know we've heard it all over again um over and over again about what what you say to yourself is very important so when you say like i am depressed i am frustrated i can't do that you know what you follow i am with is very important because a couple episodes back um the um, supernatural oil, supernatural oil episode. I had said something, and like when I said it, the Holy Spirit kind of like said what? But I I had to wait till I finished the episode to have a conversation with him about it. In the episode supernatural oil, I said, you know, I know I battle with depression, and immediately I heard the soup like the Holy Spirit was like, who told you that? Who told you that you battle with depression? And I'm like, well. My doctor told me that what it was that I was experience, experiencing was depression. And the Holy Spirit was like, I never told you. who to, I never told you that you battled with depression. You went off of what somebody else told you that you were. And so I'm like, ah, you're right. So then he started breaking it down, telling me exactly what it was that it that I do experience. It's not depression that I experience. It's okay. There's a form of grief. There's some things that, that take place. Um, you know, and I have to go into solitude, solitude to process my emotions. Um, God was showing me that depression is when you feel like you can't get up out the bed. Um, you know, that's a, that's a deep level of, of sickness. Um, and so being mindful, like, hold on, we're not going to put that label on your, your feelings because, you know, absolutely not. Like you, you're, you don't go through depression. You're not, you don't experience depressive, uh, feelings. What you're feeling is when you're grieving something, you have to sit with yourself, process your emotions, get through, because I don't be where I can't get out the bed. I might cry, you know, through different moments of trying to process whatever took place, but I don't be in the space where I can't get out the bed or I can't eat unless it's a health, unless I'm battling with my health. Um, for some reason, then I would be like, okay, you know, like that. There have been a there has been a circumstance where I was dealing with a health issue and I couldn't eat, but it had no reason, nothing to do with the fact that of what I was dealing with emotionally. You see what I'm saying? So you know, God just was showing me then. I I I, I never told you that you battle with depression. Somebody else told you that. Oh, they tried to diagnose you with this, right? And so then. Um, today, God brought me to a scripture about when Rachel named her son Benjamin. So um, she was struggling. She um, she had battled with not being able to have kids for years, right? And so, you know, she would pray and ask God for a child. She finally um, had a child named Joseph. And then, you know, God ended up giving her another child, Benjamin. And that pregnancy was very hard for her, very uh, depressing for her and frustrating. And so um, before she died, she named him Ben-Oni, which means son of my sorrow. And his dad changed his name to Benjamin. And Benjamin means um, son of my right hand. And so God started breaking that down for me. That is in, um, where is it? I just had it in my phone. Genesis 35. Um, 
y'all i had this together but once i started talking so my i got the holy spirit talking to me in my head and i'm trying to talk to y'all <laughs> It's, it's crazy i'm still trying to adapt but anyways um genesis 35 16 through 18 is when um rachel rachel was grieving uh she's having a difficult labor she dies um but before she takes her last breath she names her son benoni um his father changed his name to benjamin and so god starts showing me you know god of she, she named he changed his son's name to son of my right hand. And so God started having me look up, you know, what is the significance of the right hand? And he started showing me how, you know, scripture says that Jesus sits at God's right hand. Um, your your right hand signif- uh, signifying that authority. Like this, this person has authority over some things. And so even Jacob, his father had to put his right hand on his head to give him authority, to give him that birthright. And so then it started bringing up something for me. So a couple, um, it's about maybe a, a year or two ago, maybe, uh, something just made me look up my, my name. Um, and I looked it up and my name, my name meant spiritually wealthy and um it also means uh god beholds in hebrew and so most recently god started making me showing me breaking breaking it down uh for me so to behold something means to um chime in on to gaze upon to put a to put extreme focus on right um it uh it means that in hebrew my name means he sees uh, which is he as in God sees it's an unordinary focus a chime in like you really focusing in on something and so I'm like oh okay like you know in the in the in scripture when we see like um somebody's talking a prophet talking or somebody someone's talking they say behold such and such such and such they want you to focus in on what that is saying like whatever jesus is saying or whatever they're trying to express to you behold like focus in focus in on this and so god started you know showing me i asked my mom i'm like you know what made you name me jessica and she was like i don't know i just like the name and to me like god started showing me that you know she 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 named you that because she just liked the name but i wanted to give you the name so that you you know you knew that spiritually you had me beholding like me focusing in on you your entire life through every single every single every single thing y'all stuttering every single thing i am focusing on i am chiming on i am gazing upon you and so then he's like like he started showing me how he kept spinning the block for me (laughs) so uh you know just the um example right so in my mind i just started seeing this image of you know somebody about to come pick you up and they're like yeah um come outside i'm about to pull up and you you know you letting them know you outside and they ain't came outside yet you know we get frustrated and irritated like then i tell them i was pulling up like i was outside waiting for them and so and i had this imagery this vision of god constantly spinning the block for me so him him me telling him like i'm ready all right i'm ready you know i'm out, i'm out the i'm coming outside right now but then something distracts me and i i don't come out and get in the car um and so god like all right she ain't ready i'm gonna spin the block and a constant, I'm going to keep, I'm going to keep, I'm going to keep spinning the block for you. <clears throat> Ooh. Until you come on out that house and get in this car. Because I got you. I'm, about to t- I'm trying to take you somewhere if you just get in the car. But I got I have to get you to, to come out the house first. I have to get you to come um, out of that place that you, you know, that you really don't belong. You somewhere that you don't belong. I'm trying to take you somewhere. Um and so, you know, God will spend the block for you. Uh, then it started making me think about the prodigal child. I mean, the prodigal son where, you know, um, how proud that father was just to have that one. And then how scripture is talking about how Jesus will, you know, if I can't remember the exact story. So don't quote me, y'all. Um, I'm not 
a minister ordained for none of this stuff. I don't have no degrees or anything. I'm just a normal person who just be reading a scripture and be in that is in relationship with God and having conversations and talking about it. But um, anyways, just uh, knowing that God will keep spinning the block for that one. If he just like if you if you have 10, it's, it's some um, there's an analogy in scripture about how a woman had 10 coins or something and she lost one. And she, even though she had 10, she had to she she had to find that one. And so even if that, that even even though it looks like, well, you got nine still left, like chill out. It's like, no, like I need to make sure I have all of them. So the knowing of God will keep spinning the block and do whatever he got to do to make sure he pull that one in too. I need to have all of them right here lined up. And so, you know, God has just been showing me like, you know, what is your name? A reminder of what is your name? Every time I've been, every time I encounter something or I face something now, um, frustrating circumstances, like what's your name now? Like, don't ever forget that I am sitting right here with you. My focus is chimed in on you. I am gazing upon you. I am like there's a, an extreme focus on you. So I see everything. You don't have to fight. You don't have to do like I see that you're frustrated and I'm going to fix this situation. Just be patient. Just just stay faithful. Just trust me. I see that person trying to trying to pull a stunt right now. I got you. Like you just sit tight. You sit in that seat. I got you. But I also see when you falling short too. So know that oh sis, I see you. You know, so it makes me even more like staying on my toes. Like, hold on, you know. Um let me make sure I'm doing everything right because I know that you're gazing upon me for the good and the bad like you see everything that i'm doing so i'm gonna get there's gonna be he sees everything that everybody is doing but knowing that my name means an extreme focus like i really see so that makes me feel really important you know y'all should name y'all child jessica too (laughs) it makes me feel really um really you know not that god doesn't gaze upon other people but knowing that my name means exactly that so what is your name you know and the knowing of you know god has just been showing me how even though his mother named him son of my sorrow because she went through so much grief the father can like can rename what did the father name you though the the father named him uh benjamin's father named him son of my right hand son of authority right so even if uh, people are calling you things or or um you know god knew what i would encounter he knew that i would go into these periods of solitude for myself um he, he knows how i was you know he knows how he created me and so I believe it was very intentional for me to be named what I named. So in my, because I I research things and I go very in in depth about, you know, different things, knowing that in my solitude, no matter what I encountered, I knew that for myself Um, because of what I would go through throughout life with my family, with friends and relationships, different things that would take place. I'm letting you know, me and you, you always got me. There was a scripture he, he gave me a couple, um, months ago in the book of Isaiah talking about how even if your own mother denies you I will never I will never um and so like all of these things together him telling me that and then him showing me my name meaning and and it's a always a constant reminder that every time something happened like I'm right here I, you are spiritually wealthy, so you can talk to me about anything. On a, you may not have all the wealth in the world, um, you know, physically in this in the world, but spiritually, you can come and ask me for anything, and I will do it for you. Like I got you, um, but it had I had to grow in my relationship with the Holy Spirit to even know what to ask for because when my mind wasn't healthy, when I wasn't in a healthy space mentally. Um, I would, I could and would ask for things that I didn't even need or did or weren't even good for me. So now because I'm growing in the Holy Spirit, um, growing in relationship with God, 
my what I want and what I need is in alignment. So when I'm asking for stuff, it's like I was, oh, now you're asking for something that I actually really want to give you. So let me give you that, you know. So I just wanted to say, what is your name? What is your name? And it may not even be your birth name. It may just be, you may just have to sit with God and, and, and get confirmation on who you are. Like, who are you and who, who are you as a child of God? He will explain to you. He will break down for you who you are, your purpose, his intention for you. Even if what your real name means is like, you're, like even if your mother named you something that you know it's just that that means something um negative you know but what did god name you what is your name focus on that today all right i love you all in real life so yesterday um i'm walking around my apartment complex listening to a podcast